All right, good morning, afternoon, or evening, students, and welcome back to Chemical Reactions. We've been learning a lot about the law of conservation of mass, which means that matter or anything that has mass cannot be created or destroyed. So in a chemical reaction, whatever the starting substance is, it has to be the same weight or mass as the ending substance. So part of our definition of a chemical reaction also is that we always need to create something new. So we know that. Take this, for example, substance A and substance B are two different substances. They created a new substance, substance C. That would be a chemical reaction. It has to be, it couldn't be substance C plus substance C created substance C. That doesn't make any sense for in terms of chemical reactions. If you look at the grams on this though, it's 50 grams for substance A, 30 grams for substance B, what do you think substance C would weigh? Go down a slide here. And if you are good at basic math, you'd figure it out that 50 plus 30 equals 80. So substance A and B combined equals 80. And that means substance C also equals 80 grams. It cannot be created nor destroyed. Any matter, any atoms, they don't just disappear. So we figured that out. Today we're going to try and analyze um, more of a one of a particular chemical reaction here that Jesse, Dr. Young's uh, helper, was looking at here. We know because of the law of conservation of mass that this container, it can't be empty. There's got to be something in it. It just must be a colorless and an odorless gas that we just don't know what it is. And she knows that sulfur was created in the process. She also found a colorless, odorless gas, and she separated that off tested it out and found out it's hydrogen chloride. So we know these two substances somehow got created. What we're trying to figure out is besides the chlorine over here on the reactant side, what is this unknown reactant in this container? What is it? And you have these pictures of the atomic level here to help you figure that out. But the next three questions are kind of to gauge your learning and think about chemical reactions, how they happen, and what could that possible other reactant be? You'll go on to part two, which is trying to figure out and name that actual chemical reactant. Good luck. You can do it. You have three questions and three different sections for part one.